Hey everybody, it's Lisa Young Sutton with another video for your thirsty minds. Now today's video is one that many of you have been waiting for. It's a complete method of distance grand tableau. And I'm sorry it took so long uh, to bring it to you, but I had to wait for um, Apollo's feedback. Um, but in preparing the video, I saw that it was going to be way too long, so I decided to split it in two anyway. And um, so this is part one uh, for Apollo and Artemis. Okay. Now, before I begin, as always, if you find anything in this video helpful, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of the uh, screen. Okay. And I'd also like to mention my blog at lisaloveslenormand.com where you'll find a lot more Lenormand information. I always, uh, you know, include it in the description box, but honestly, I don't know how many people look at the description box, so I thought I'd mention it. Okay, now this is a video, uh, well, it is a video, but this is a grand tableau that I laid a few months ago for a man who we're going to call Apollo, and he's married, um, to Artemis, of course, and they have three grown children that live outside the home. He is employed, he's middle-aged, and as he put it, he's going through a midlife crisis. So he asked for a reading to see uh, where things are heading for him over the next six months. Okay, so six months is the time frame for this spread. Um, this is the Stralsunder Lenormand, this is a mini deck, and uh, where you can get it is listed in the description box below. All right, so I'd like to start by just explaining a bit about what the method of distance is. All right, so we know from the plot, okay, the Philippe Lenormand original translations, which is just the little white book. Okay, it's the little white book that accompanied all early decks, um, and it was created, hang on, Air Bunnies, it was created by the fictitious Philippe Lenormand, all right? Um, yes, he was fictitious, just as the Petit Lenormand and the Grand Jeu Lenormand were not used by Mademoiselle Lenormand, they were just named after her, after her death, um, for marketing purposes, okay? Just as the uh, Gypsy Witch fortune cards um, mention that they are, you know, in the introduction in their little white book, they mention her, that that was her deck or whatever, and it, of course it wasn't. It, it, that was all for marketing, okay? Which is fine, because it, it doesn't matter that she never used them. All right, so this method the method of distance, um, was almost lost to the English-speaking world because, because all of the, the material about it, anything that was written about it was written in French and German and Dutch and I, I'm not sure what other languages, but anything but Eng English, really. So um, we can thank people like Bjorn Muris um, for saving this method and bringing it to the, the English-speaking world. So I thank you, Bjorn, for that. And those of you who have read my book, um, have read the introduction, uh, you know, know that Bjorn was my first teacher and that the method of distance is where my Lenormand journey began. So I've studied this method quite extensively. Yes, and I have to show my book. This is my book, The Petite Lenormand Oracle. I won't read the whole thing. Um, the whole title by Lise Young Sutton, that's me. Um, and this is available in ebook format also. Uh, so you can go right on Amazon or wherever you get ebooks and uh, grab, the, grab the ebook if you'd like. But I, I wanted to show you that for every card, in, in the card description pages, I do include, um, well, I include method of distance um, meanings for the card, and I include the, the uh, plot. Okay the plot meanings for the cards. Okay, so that's that. Now, um, what I want you to know before we proceed is that when you use this method, 
when you're using the method of distance, it doesn't change your card meanings. But instead, it provides another layer to your readings, and it's a huge layer. Okay, for example, the tree, right? The tree card. Oh, wait, I have to smell my, smell my wand. <laughs> Where you can get this uh, lovely hazel wand is also listed in the description box, okay? So let, let's talk about the tree for a second. Um, the tree is a neutral card of well-being, right? And it will still be read as such, it, you know, when you use this method. But on top of that, we will use it as the life area card for health, which I know you do that in other GTs also. Um, but when we, when we read it for health, it's now viewed more negatively, okay? And like all negative cards, we don't want to see them in the comfort zone. Okay, this is the comfort zone. I'm gonna explain that in, the, in a moment, and I'm gonna explain why this grand tableau is, is kind of separated into sections, okay? I did that for the video. All right, um, but back to the tree. Um, so we, we don't wanna see any negative cards in the, in the comfort zone. And when we read the card as, as the card of health in the method of distance, we don't want it near because now we're looking at it more negatively. Why? Because if it's in the comfort zone, that means it's bringing attention to itself. It means that the, the querent needs to address their health in some way. And, and who wants to do that, right? When you go to the doctor or like you go, you go and get blood work, you don't want to hear from them, right? You don't want to get a call saying, uh, we, we, you need to come in again, we need to talk to you, we found something in your blood work, and you know, uh, we need to address this, what, right? You don't want to hear that. So you don't want that card near you. You don't want to hear anything about your health. No news is good news. Okay, um, and another example is the house card. And this is a good example for the method of distance because, um, what is the house card? It's the card of, that refers to your private life, right? It refers to your home. It refers to shelter, safety, and comfort regarding your domestic life, the, the, you know, the life of your uh, household and your family, right? But in the method of distance, we have an added meaning, and that is of prosperity, okay? So I think that is unique to the method of distance. All right, so its location in the spread tells you how prosperous your family or household is or will be during the time frame of the reading, okay? And as you can see, it's, it's one of his far cards. So, um, but anyway, that's, uh, you know, actually breaking down this, this spread is, is going to be in part two. All right, so. We can say that the method of distance is all about the proximity of cards to the querence card and groups of theme cards that we call clusters. It relies heavily on the positive and negative aspects of the cards. It's typically used to check all life areas of the querent but can just as easily be read for a single topic which I've already made a video on, so check the Method of Distance playlist on my channel, okay? All right, another point about the Method of Distance is there are no houses, and before you all start crying <laughs> over that, you're gonna find out that you're not gonna miss them at all because there is so much to this method that you, you wouldn't even have time. You wouldn't even have time to add houses even if you wanted to but you won't care, all right? Because rather than checking houses, we check clusters or, or groupings of themed cars, cards. And rather than chaining houses to create a story, the story evolves from the proximity of cards and their groupings as they relate to the life areas, okay? It's, just, it's a different technique, all right? Um, but this, this method gives you a really tight and focused reading. And you also never have to worry about when to end a chain, okay? Um, you know, a house chain either. So um, it really 
lends itself to certain types of readings and certain types of readers, you know, those who need or, or want a lot of structure and organization because that's, you'll see as we go through these two videos that there's a lot of structure and organization to this. So if that's what you like, you're going to love this. All right, other than no houses, we do not divide the GT up into timing columns or past, present, future, okay? Um, timing columns is when you, um, like say you, you uh, were laying a uh, eight by four plus four for eight months and then each column would be a month, right? So we don't do that in the method of distance and we do not read, we do not separate the spread into past, present, future. All right, the spread, the entire spread needs to be viewed as a cohesive grouping of cards, the locations of which provide you with your primary information, right? The entire GT is one spread where all the cards work together to provide a snapshot of all areas of a person's life, if you choose to do it that way, okay? Um, but you know, the, but the 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 point I'm trying to make here is that they are laid for a single time frame. Okay. Either a look at the past, a snapshot of the present, or the present moving into a predetermined stretch of time into the future. Okay. For me, it's usually one to six months. In this case, this is a six-month look into the future, okay? This is a look at the present situation of the Quarant and as he moves into the next six months, all right? That's what this is all about. Now, let's now look at how we determine proximity because that is why this is spread out the way it is, okay? What I've done here is I've separated the comfort zone from the rest of the cards, okay? And I do suggest that you do this when you are learning this method. It makes it so much easier than constantly having to count out your cards and say, oh wait, is that a, a, a near card or a far, right? It's pretty easy to see the very near cards because that's the box around your, your Quarant's card. But, you know, um, it, this just makes it easier. So this is the way I started. All right, so what am I talking about when I say the comfort zone? The comfort zone consists of the box around the primary significator card or the querence card, okay? And the cards that touch those cards, okay? So it's like two layers, first layer, second layer. Okay, he's missing one card. Well, he's, he's actually missing more because he's missing, you know, th this bottom section too, right? Yeah. I mean, if he was up here, this whole thing, this whole thing would be a complete comfort zone. All right, but because he's so low, he's missing cards down here in this card. All right, so anyway, the comfort zone consists of the very near and the near cards, the very near and the near cards, and they are the most influential cards, right? They are the closest to the Quarant's card. They are the most influential, okay? So you could say that the cards touching him, the very near cards are the most influential, and then the next layer out are still influential, but just like one step away, right? We could say it that way. Now, the next layer out are the far cards right? The far cards and the very far cards are what I call the out of reach zone. So I have my comfort zone and I have my out of reach zone, okay? The comfort zone are the things that are within reach and of course the outer <laughs> reach zone is uh, the stuff that's out of reach, okay? So the far cards are the cards that are just out of reach, right? And we, we'd like to see negative negative cards here rather than positive cards, okay? Um, but any positive cards here can show things that the client 
it's may may just miss out on right okay so negative cards here are going to show things that he's going to miss out on but we but we want to see that okay so that's my point um now the very far cards are the furthest away, the, the, the furthest from the client's or querent's reach. And so naturally, you'd like to see negative cards here. Now, notice he's only got four very far cards because of where he lands. All right, so I'm going to show you real quick how this would change if he landed here. Okay, if he had landed in this position, he would only have three very near cards, right? And he would only have one, two, three, four, five, six near cards. So that would, this would be his entire comfort zone if he had landed here. Everything else would have been out of his reach. Okay? So that's why where they land determines these, these zones. Drop my microphone. All right, there we go. It wasn't, it wasn't clipped properly. Okay. Now, for the last part of this video, which is, like I said, it's part one of two, okay, I'm going to run through the clusters, okay, because that's important. That's an important distinction between this method and other methods of reading a grand tableau. So for this, I'm going to use, wait, let me see, I'm going to check my, my camera here. There we go. Okay. For this uh, one, I'm going to use my 1889 Lenormand. Okay. I love this. I, I love the box, right? Look at the box. I know I've showed this in another video. It's like <laughs> the, the box is gorgeous on the inside. Like who does this on the inside of a box? Anyway, I love this deck. Okay. So the only thing I don't like about it is the lack of <laughs> playing card insets. All right, anyway, okay. But I wanted to show you the, the clusters and explain what they are. So the, the top line here is the health cluster. The health cluster consists of the tree, the coffin, the whip, the clouds, and the tower, okay? So the coffin, the whip, and the clouds are the cards you don't want to see, see near the tree. And the tower is a card that you want to see near the Querence card, okay? But they're all part of the health cluster, okay? So these are kind of self-explanatory why you wouldn't want to see them near your health card. But this, the tower is the card of longevity, so it refers to a long life. Doesn't in, it doesn't refer to the quality of life. The, it it includes, ah, <laughs> it refers to the length, the quantity of life, not the quality of life. So when you read the cards around it, that will tell you about the quality of the length of time the person has left. But in, see, in finding it near their card, it tells you that they will have a long life. Okay? That's why it's part of the health cluster. Okay. Now the love cluster, that would be these three cards. We got the heart, the ring, and the anchor. Those are part of the love cluster, okay? So we have cards of, of love and commitment and faithfulness, all right? So that's why they're part of that cluster. The celestial cluster is the, the luminaries, right? We have the, the sun, the stars, and the moon, okay? So the stars gives hope for success in your current endeavors. Sun provides light, energy, and warmth, and the moon speaks of our social success and recognition. So we want all of them nearby and above, because above they shine their light. They all provide light, right? Well, this reflects light, but you know, but anyway, we want them all above in the sky where they belong. Think of it that way, okay? Shining down on you. All right, now the next cluster is the financial cluster, which I have to steal a card here, a couple cards. Wait, hang on, get her out of here. Come here. Okay, Ooh. Okay. so the financial cluster consists of the fish, the ship, the anchor, and the coffin. 
Okay, Bjorn calls this the C cluster. All right, so the fish is the card of your cash flow and your income. The ship in this cluster represents extra money coming in. The anchor in this cluster shows whether or not you have a grip on your finances. Okay, the anchor in either cluster is, is the card of um, hope, security, stability, and trust, right? So whether it's in the love cluster or the financial cluster, it, it has the same meaning, all right? Um, and the coffin is the one, it's only included here because it's, it's the one you don't want to see, just like with the health cluster. You're finding cards here you don't want to see in there, but you have to look for them, right? That's why they're part of the cluster, they're, you're looking for them. Um, so yeah, you don't, obviously this is uh, illness and death, right? So illness and death of your, of your finances <laughs> is not good, okay? Now the work cluster, the reason I have her sitting here, is because the work cluster consists only, uh, it's not much of a cluster, it just consists of your clients or qu querents card and your work card, okay? My work card is the moon, okay? Originally it was the anchor, but when I was studying with Bjorn, I switched to the moon just because he kept saying moon, 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 and I just thought, oh, I'll just switch, and I can switch back. But then I never switched back. <laughs> All right. So um, this is my whole work cluster right here. So basically, when you're looking at your work cluster, you're looking for the proximity of these two cards, and you're reading the surrounding cards All right, to tell you about work. All right. The travel cluster is just the ship. Okay, let me move these guys now. This is the travel cluster. It's just the ship and the birds. All right. Um, why these two cards? Well, the ship is self-explanatory, but um, the ship is the card that represents long trips, right? Um, it's, it, you know, it's the card of, of foreign places and distance and all that, right? So it, it's, um, it's related to big trips, uh, trips of long distance and long duration. Um, it relates to foreign countries, um, thing, you know, going across the sea. Um, so it gener generally refers to vacations, all right? So it needs to be in the comfort zone, though, to refer to a trip. It's not going to refer to a trip unless it's in the comfort zone, okay? So if it's very near, it's saying that a trip will happen unless you have cards touching it, such as the coffin um, or the scythe, which would be like a last minute cancellation. Coffin would just be an end, maybe due to illness or something. Um, but if it's very near, it, it does refer to a, a trip, okay? If it's in the near position, if it's in the near, you know, cards, it tells you that a trip is being planned and will probably come about soon, you know, like within the time frame of the spread, okay? So if it's in, the, if it's in either of those sections, if it's in the comfort zone, it does refer to a trip. Now the birds, you're wondering why the heck is the birds here? Okay, the birds is interesting. <laughs> I love this. Because what is the birds the card of? It's the card of everyday stresses when near, right? But when far, when out of the comfort zone, it refers to a short trip. Now this makes perfect sense to me. Because what's the remedy for daily stresses? It's, the remedy is to take the day off and go somewhere, right? So if the birds is near your, your Clarence card, you're stuck with all the everyday stresses. But if it's far, you don't have all those everyday stresses. Instead, you have like a day out, <laughs> all right? So I, I love that. I, I just, I love that, uh, I love that meaning for that card. Okay, so the next cluster is the cluster of adversaries. That's down here. Okay, here we have the cluster of adversaries. We have the, the snake, the fox, the mountain, whoops, the mice and the mountain. Okay, um, Bjorn calls this the, what does he call it? The gang of misery. Okay, I mean, why are they in here? Well, you know why. Okay, I mean, the this, this snake brings adversity. 
in the form of lies, betrayal, intrigue at worst, or difficulties, complexities, or complications at best. Okay, when it's in the comfort zone, it always brings tension. The fox is the card that warns us of wrongness and asks us to be on guard. And the closer it is, the greater the risk, right? Remember that the fox is the card of self-interest, which can manifest itself in the form of trickery, uh, manipulation, backstabbing, and deception, right? So when near, the fox is trying to outfox the client, right? Um, okay, so the, the, the mountain, the mountain in the near position brings enemies and obstacles close to the client, right? And the mice, I'm, I'm talking about the mice last because it's a, it's a bit different. It's a negative card wherever it falls, right? But in the comfort zone, it brings the possibility of recouping whatever it steals, okay? So the, the mice and the cross are the exceptions to the, to the, um, the distance rules for negative cards, okay? They, they add something positive, a bit positive when they're, when they're near, okay? And what's positive about the mice near is that whatever is, is taken, whatever the mice are stealing, you have the chance of getting it back, okay? So, I mean, the mice can show a literal removal of something of value or a symbolic theft, such as um, the client is missing something um, or there's something missing from their life, right? Okay, so if this is far, it's gone for good. Now, the next um, cluster is the interpersonal cluster, which is the child, the dog, and the garden. Bjorn calls this one the close circle. I call it the interpersonal circle. And what do these three cards have in common? Well, they all relate to how we interact with other people as well as how other people view us. So the closer, this group falls to our, our card, the better our dealings will be with our friends and the people within our environments with whom we interact, right? So they all refer to like social acceptance and appreciation. And when surrounded by favorable cards, they show that, um, they show harmonious dealings with others that make us feel, you know, warm and fuzzy and safe and respected. All right, so we want these cards near. We want these cards far, except for this one, and we want these cards near. Okay, the last cluster is the Providence Cluster, and the Providence Cluster is the lily, the bouquet, and the child. So come here, child, okay? And this one's a bit unique because some people may choose not to use this. It depends on how you, uh, you know, what your beliefs are about karma and fate, okay? The Providence Cluster is intended to show what a higher power has in store for us, okay? Now, let me just briefly explain why these cards are part of the Providence Cluster, okay? The lily, the lily, the original meaning for this card is a happy life which is gained by an exchange of virtue with one's environment, right? So that's why it's here. You want it in the comfort zone and you want it above or at least on the same line as your, uh, you know, uh, Quarence card, all right? So when the lily falls somewhere above, it indicates that the client will be rewarded for his morality and good character, okay? The child is here because it's the card of innocent intentions and goodness which will be rewarded by one's environment or in the case of the Providence Cluster, will be rewarded by the universe, okay? The bouquet is here because it represents the little extras one receives in life. And when it falls near, and especially above, along with the lily, it's considered a reward for your goodness. Isn't that lovely? I love that. Okay, so that is it for today, my friends. Um, tomorrow I will be filming part two, which will cover all the steps in breaking down the method of distance grand tableau, and we will see what's going on with Apollo and Artemis, okay? 
So as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.